Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. This is Q&A Friday and for some reason, don't ask me why, I'm going to, well I'm doing it on a live stream on my Facebook page uh, or my Facebook group. It's Jason Newlands. Hi Cara, it's Jason Newlands boring group so if you'd like to watch future ones live as I record them can't see the screen my look my eyesight's terrible um, which is good when I look in the mirror so I'm going to the only problem with this is so I'm gonna say hello to people hi as you come on here but I will also do I'm gonna answer the questions that I've been asked I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven questions. Now, uh, hi Kissy, the, I need to let you know, it's a bit early for me to be bored to sleep. This, it's all right, this, I'm guessing, hi Laura, this um, probably isn't necessarily going to be, this will be the recording, but I will edit it and release it tomorrow morning as a podcast episode, if that makes sense. So it'll still be available in the four different formats, 10 hours, five hours with music and without music. Also, there's a good chance that Vinny will bark during this. Now I edit that out in the podcasts. I won't edit, well I can't edit it out. I can't edit it out because it's live. I do have this though, which is my little, um, I'll do it for you. A bit loud. But, oh, sorry, Vin. You don't even want to see what Vinny's doing right now. Sorry, mate. Carry on doing whatever you're doing. <sighs> so, it's, I realised that it's possibly not ideal if you are going to, if you want to listen to Fall Asleep because you, if you're watching the video, if you're watching live, he will bark at some point very very lightly because he always does <clears throat> so it's quite warm in here so here's a weird thing what's just happened i have a drink I also my cough <coughs> so he just coughed and that's another thing that i do edit out not that i'm always coughing but uh roof says hi hi roof so, of course, as I as I normally do, I haven't told anyone I'm doing this, so it's it's not really very prepared, and I just thought it'd be it's hot in here. I thought it'd be nice, just some nice to do something a little bit different. I think it's because I've been going through my past Facebook live streams from over the years and I've done a lot of them but just haven't done a many recently so there you go last night last night because today is Friday the 26th I think is it Friday the 26th yeah Friday the 26th of Jolly and so I want to say thank you to Cara for your lovely messages earlier. And Lara, Laura says, I never made it further than about five minutes when I actually want to sleep. So it'd be nice to actually listen to you um, for once. And our lovely Vinny, of course. Well, if I can, at some point, grab Vinny and pull him on screen, I will. But you don't want to see Vinny right now of what he's doing if I pull him in the screen I'm guessing if I actually held him up the microphone and <laughs> would just be knocked off because he's um, giving himself a little bath is that the right words uh, Ruth says have you lost some weight Jason you're looking svelte well thank you very much uh, I did actually think I'd lost weight until I went on a tree and a tree bent over 
and so but I think yeah I've lost some weight but then I have I think I put a little bit of weight back on again and it's uh, because of my back I've been limited to doing I've had to stop doing exercise uh, although my back I've realized what I need to do I need to walk more I need to do more walking and if I do that I can't even see this is terrible I can't even see the numbers of people on here like if it's five or six my eyesight man that's weird I'm only like this far away which is about a hundred inches um, so yeah uh, I did lose some weight now I've I think I put a little bit of weight back on but I've realized that my back is definitely appreciating walking so I'm gonna do a little bit more of that uh, I know I walk Vinny every day but I need to go for sort of more walks more longer walks so I hope you can all hear me okay I'm just using the iPhone so it's not particularly I'm not right close to it but the microphone is you know this will be like a normal podcast would you want another treat oh, blimey he wants another treat hold two seconds He knows that as soon as I give him the tree and I try and grab him, he won't let me grab him. No, no, you're having a treat unless you get up. I'm trying to get, get up. He won't. He won't. He won't. He won't literally will not let me pick him up. There you go. He's, he's camera shy. Uh, Mike says, hi, Mike. Hi, Jason. Hope you're doing well, my friend. We appreciate all the content you produce. Give you a hug for me. I will do if I can catch him. He's... Uh, I got a treat and I put it on the chair thinking if he jump up and I can like not grab him but like pick him up and say hello to everyone but he knows he knew exactly what I was going to try and do doesn't like being picked up apart from when he does go figure so last night I don't know, I think Vinny was barking again, so I was like, there's no one outside, and I heard the door, my neighbour's door, but it was like, well, there's no one coming out. So I went out, and I said, are you right, mate? And he said, no, I'm, I'm locked in. So he's locked in again. It happened a few months ago, he got a new door, and he's locked in, can't get out of the flat, his own flat, his own home, he can't leave. And... I've been through this. I did a whole podcast on that particular event. It went on for ages and ages and ages. And the same kind of thing. I said, all right, well, I'll phone up the counts. I said, have you got the, have you got the number for the outer team, out of office hours, uh, emergency team? And he said, no. I said, well, I'll find it. He had phoned me as well too, but I didn't see him phone. So he had to try to contact me to get help. So I find the number, I have to go online to find the number because the number I was ringing wasn't working. The, the number I had saved. And he's shouting through the door. I can't, I can hear him, but he can't hear me. And I get through to the council again, out of hours. Exactly the same thing. Who are you? Why are you calling? Why is he not calling? Why do you want to get into his flat? Like, I don't want to get into his flat. He wants to get out of the flat. 
Why is he not calling? He doesn't have the number. Who are you? Well, just like, he, he, he asked me to help him and I'm trying to help him. And I've helped him before a few times with different things. And every time I talk to the council, I was like, who are you? What do you want? What's he got to do with you? Like, but he's an elderly man. He's nearly 80 and I'm trying to help him. Oh, I hope that there's someone there for me when I'm that age that's going to, a neighbour that maybe would be, help me, you know, if I'm stuck in. In fact, I have, I have had that happen. My friend Luke, I had exactly the same thing happen in my door. The, the, the lock broke. The thing came off in my hand, so I couldn't unlock it. So I had to phone him up for him to come up and put the key through the letterbox so he could open the door from the outside. After about 10 minutes of him laughing at me, but you know, eventually he did. Uh, Mike says, well, why can't I read anything? Will this be a podcast episode two? Yeah, this will be, Mike. Um, this will be the Q&A Friday, let me bore you to sleep. I will edit it, so any kind of weird sounds, I will... Laura says we will look, we'll look, look after you when you're 80. How young is everyone? Am I really old? <laughs> everyone, is, everyone else will still be young when I'll be 80. I'm only young. I'm only 35. Thank you, Laura. That's very kind of you. I do. I, 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 I want to be looked after now. I don't want to wait till I'm 80. But it, it's, it's nice. I think it's nice to help people out. Like neighbours and stuff. It's just... It's just a nice thing to do. It's like the right thing to do. I'm not going to ignore the fact that he can't get out of his flat. Because, you know, it's it's got to be scary, I think, you know. You're 20, okay, fair. You're, you're only a couple of years younger than me, Laura. A couple, then a couple more, 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 then it's... Uh, yeah. Over four years older than me, I am. You, me, we are. Yeah. So, yeah, this will be the podcast. It probably shouldn't be, but it will be the podcast tomorrow. But I will also leave this on here. And if I'm able to, I will download this video from Facebook and I will upload it onto YouTube as well. So it can be watched on YouTube. I'm coming to realise, coming to realise that I think YouTube, I've got a different audience on YouTube. And to what I have on the podcasts, I think. Not 100%, but I think so. And uh, what I've done, I have uploaded the podcast of the Let Me Boy to Sleep on there. And it's still in the process of uploading all the episodes. But I've not made videos of each each podcast episode like I was thinking about doing and I'm going to upload every new episode of let me boy to sleep or any new recording I do onto YouTube from now on any new thing but I'm not gonna I say I'm not gonna bother with the old stuff because I still am I've already uploaded about six to eight today already that I found I keep finding old stuff that was like oh I get so excited. Um, anyway, so, oh yeah, last night. So this, um, my neighbour, I'm like shouting through the letterbox and the woman, the, the lady who's answered the phone said, well, who are you? Why are you calling? Why isn't he calling? What's he to you? Like, what do you mean what's he to me? He's my boyfriend. What, what, what does he care what he is to me? I'm his granddad. I, what, what, we, we dress up on Fridays. Dress up Friday day. And we like to eat baked beans off each other. I mean, what, what, whose, whose business is it? What, who he is to me? And I just, just trying to help the man. And she, it's the second time. Second time I've had this. Well, only the third time actually. 
Sky High Sky, High Sky. And so I contact, I, I basically I put the phone through to him. I said, look, just you speak to her. She doesn't want to speak to me. Put the phone through. Uh, hi, says Sky. Hi, says Sky. And basically he started looking for his phone to give her his phone number. And he disappeared. I mean, I didn't like visually disappear. I couldn't see through the door. And it wasn't like some really amazing magic trick. But I couldn't, I didn't know where he was. I was shouting, shouting through his letterbox, nothing, nothing. Like for about 10 minutes. Like, where are you? Where are you? I didn't have my phone on me, so I couldn't do it. In the end, he started saying, yeah, it's all right. I'm, I'm just trying to find the phone. So once he found his phone, he, he handed me back my phone and uh, my phone had disconnected. So I had to phone the lady back again and say, look, I can give you his telephone number from my phone because I've got it on my phone because I know him. I know him, I do. And she said, oh, don't, don't worry, we don't need the number now. I've, uh, I've made an appointment for a joiner or a carpenter or whatever to come round. I said, okay, so you, so you don't want his number? No. So we spent three days looking for his phone, you don't need his number? No, we don't, won't need it. Okay, cool. I said, uh, well, he'll be round in the next couple of hours or so. I said, okay, cool, all right, thank you, and that was it. About 10 o'clock, um, the carpenter turns up and he's lovely and he looks at the door and he's like, the first thing he says to me, and I know they have to ask this, is, have you tried opening it from the outside? Um, yeah, because he did pass the keys through and I tried to open it from the outside. There was like, I guess, wouldn't that be the first thing anyone did? Well, the first thing I tried to do was try to push it in with my shoulder, which uh, didn't help with the healing of my back, to be honest. But that's what happened last time. We could just push it open because it just kept jarring or jamming, you know. But this time it's the lock. So there's like one, two, probably about four to six locks that go in. Very strong doors. And once they're in, you can't open the door without a, a, a grinder to like do it that way from outside and he's he he, ba he knocked through the through the lock so he like took the lock out of the actual thing but it made no difference he couldn't get in so he said well what we can try and do is come in through a window and try and I'll come in through the window and I'll do it from the inside. And uh, I shouted to, but I had, I had my neighbor on the phone, but he couldn't hear the man I was with. I mean, uh, I did say to him, you are real, aren't you? He said, yeah, I didn't say that, but he, um, he couldn't hear him, so I had to speak to, to the neighbour. So look, he's going to come in through, he's going to get a ladder, a ladder, and he's going to come up into your, through one of your windows. So he starts opening, so he goes, okay, and he goes off. Another 10 minutes, we can't get hold of him. Like, where are you? And this is on the phone, he's just not answering. I said, and he starts opening his kitchen window, and the bloke, the carpenter says, I can't get in through the kitchen window because there's not enough room for the ladder to be put up there. And so I'm just trying to talk to him and say, look, we can't use the kitchen window. Can you, we have to do the, the living room window. You have to go through the lit. And he said, in the end, he came out and said, oh, okay. Another 20 minutes, I couldn't get hold of him. Like, are you there? Are you there? Eventually, the bloke said, 
the carpenter said, well, because he went downstairs, had a look, he thought, no, this is too dangerous. Uh, he said, I'm not actually allowed to do this on my own. This, uh, there needs to be two people when we go into people's houses and when there's a ladder involved and stuff, there needs to be two of us. That's protocol. And I said, no, I agree with you. It was getting dark outside. It wasn't safe to be climbing up a ladder at that time. Uh, so he said, can you ask him if he needs to go out or any, if he's okay till tomorrow morning? So I'm on the phone saying, do you, do you need to go out? I'm sort of like shouting, do you need to, do you need to, um, are you okay tonight? Do you need to go out or can you wait till tomorrow morning? And he said, you don't have to go to shout. He opened the letterbox, he said, you haven't got a shout, I can hear you. So I just, that was it. Now after this, no, before this, what I did, because we've got a chip van and my neighbour, so between us, the the, mat, the carpenter coming, I went outside, took Vinny for a, out for a bit, not to say the word. I'm steadily going down with all the numbers, so now I've got like minus three people listening. Lovely. I think I'll relax. <sighs> Takes the pressure off me. I'm going to do the Q&A in a minute. I forgot about that. And then... And then the... I'm walking outside. He asked me to tell the chip van what's happened and he can't... He can't get out because he's one of them best regulars. They buy him chocolates at Christmas. Seriously. He's their regular. And uh, I told them, and they, they laughed, and they said, well, can't you get anything, can't you put it through his letterbox? I said, I suppose so. If, if They said, well, we'll pack everything up really tight and do it in more than one bundle and so you can put it through the letterbox for him. And he can pay next week. So I said, oh, right, okay. Did that, he was very happy. Wow, so Sky says, chip van, I'm from Hawaii. What's a chip van? It's a... Uh, you know fish and chips? You've heard of fish and chips? Do you have, you have fish and chips in America, don't you? Pretty sure. Um, it's basically that. It's, it's like an ice cream van, but they serve like... Uh, um, fried chips what like a lunch truck yeah kind of but it, it's all cooked food so they they cook it there as well so it's a big fryer yeah fish and chips so that's it so it's a fryer they've got all the heated cabinets basically just a miniature version of what I used to work in when I was a kid when I was 15 16 and it's like got sausages and they cook to order as well, like nuggets, all kind of frozen stuff, basically. And they've got drinks. Um, so it comes around the area. Basically, there's, there's a whole fleet of them that go around the town. So that's kind of, yeah. I don't really use it very often, but weirdly enough, they gave me some free chips. Because I think I was, well, I was their only customer at that point. So they were going to take off. So we might have some free chips if you want. That's nice. Kara says, my kids are wanting me to jump in the pool with them. Got to go. But it was cool to see you live for a minute. Oh, thanks, Kara. Have fun in your swimming pool. Uh, Kate says, good food truck. Yeah. we don't, I guess we don't really call them food. Tr Maybe we call them food trucks. Um, we had them on the motorways. I mean, it's not really a lot of difference, I don't think, between... It's just the, the... It looks like an ice cream van, to be honest. I think it probably was an ice cream van that they'd converted into a food truck. Because um, you get them on the motorways, off the motorways, where they serve, like, burgers, and, and they'll have a fryer and, you know, do that stuff. A lot of money in that. Or at... Fairs, concerts, festivals, things like that as well. So yeah, it's it's yeah. I think it's quite a good a good money earner. I reckon. 
I would, yeah, I imagine, yeah, if they, because they do long hours, but I reckon they do, they make some money. So it's a good, good business to have, especially if you're at a festival. Because imagine every, every fair, jumble sale, anything, there's all, those vans have always got queues, haven't they? Especially in the summer. So, and ice cream as well. But I'm going to wait to have an ice cream. I'm going to wait until the summer starts, then I'm going to have an ice cream. So, uh, and then they came around this morning. So I, I put the food through his thing. They came around last night. He went, because he couldn't do it. They came this morning. I, f I phoned up my neighbour at eight o'clock to make sure he was awake. He didn't answer. And then he phoned me up. And I said, you're right. He said, why didn't, he said, yeah. What do you want? <laughs> I said, I'm just, I'm just, let, just reminding you about tonight, today, because they're going to come round, and I just want to make sure that you can hear when they knock. He says, I always hear when they knock. Well, they turned up, and um, Sky says, Tori, sorry, I didn't get the terminology. It's interesting to know that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you what, Sky. The terminology probably changes depending on what part of the country you're in as well. Because we, I use a terminology for the south. I live in the southeast. But people that live in the east or the north or the middle of the country, northwest, they've got probably got different terminology um, than what I use. So there's no like definite thing because before they started coming around, I didn't never see the chip van before, I don't think. It's the first time. Never seen a van going around selling chips. Like round the estate, round houses and stuff. So it's quite a new thing, although they've been around here for about eight years. Eight yeah, probably eight years now. Seven oh blimey. Time. Wow. Time goes. So all right, so I f anyway, they s he said, yeah, it's fine. I'll hear them when they come round. Okay. So I have a knock at my door. It's them. And they say, he's not answering. <laughs> it's two blokes. He's not answering the door. I said, okay. I'll, um, do you want me to phone him? He said, yeah, please. So I phoned him. Eventually, he answers the phone. And I said, the, can you, I said, can you hear me? He said, yeah. I said, can you hear me when I knock? Can you hear this? And I banged on his door really loudly. Can you hear that? And he said, no. So I don't know. It's, I don't know what part of the flat he's in. I don't, maybe his flat's really big. He might like, maybe he's converted the loft or something. I don't know. Uh, he's got soundproof doors. Personally, I think it might have soundproof ears, but uh, he eventually he came to the door and he opened the window for them. There's two two men turned up, and within about five minutes, they had the door open really quick. The time, the, the only the real time thing was to replace the lock and all that stuff. So it was done. So it's good, but. Hmm. Fun and games. Oh. So, I should get on with the... Did I say only listen when you can safely close your eyes? I should have said that. Uh, I do apologise. Only 20 minutes in or 30 minutes in or I don't know. So, I've got questions. All comments. So, my questions. Any questions for this week's Q&A Friday? First question from Diane. Diana. Do you ever, do you ever fall asleep when you do the countdown so this is more referring to my hypnosis -y relaxation stuff or sleep stuff I guess because I know I don't really do a countdown with the let me boy you sleep but I do do it a lot with the deep sleep whisper or any you know hypnosis -y stuff yes <laughs> is the answer it depends how long the countdown is 
if it's just like a 10 down to 1, if it's a 100 down to 1, I don't think I've ever completed a 100 down to 1 correctly. Whenever I listen back to it, I miss out numbers. Always. Guaranteed, I miss out numbers. Because I fall asleep. I like uh, 52. Sixty-three, sixty-three, sixty-two. Like I just don't know where I'm at. I think I might. Yeah, it is hard. It's really hard. I mean, I said that before. I'm getting ready to have a drink. It's just warm in here for some reason. I think it's just a. It's my natural glow. My natural warmth, shining through. So sorry I can't show you Vinny. I should get a little Vinny cam. So if I knew how to do it, I probably could do it actually. Get a little cam and just sort of filmed him. So aim it under, like connected to the desk underneath and it films him doing what he's doing. And every now and then I'll, I could just have a little thing so you can watch it whenever you want. Maybe I'll try and do that, maybe. I actually, I found a video that I did of Andre from, well, obviously anything that I did with Andre was years ago, but it was, uh, I filmed him for two hours. He was in his cage. I must have gone out or done something, and it was two hours, and you see him asleep and moving about, getting, like, leaning over to get some water, not even leaving his hammock to do that, and it's so cute. Uh, Laura says, I always count from 100 down to 1 to fall asleep. In my head though, can't imagine fall asleep while talking. You should try it. Seriously, in some ways, it's... I don't know, to be fair. I don't know if it's harder or not, because I don't know if I've ever... I have counted... Yeah, I have counted down in my head before. Not for me, personally. Uh, I've done it. Um, hmm. See, for me, it's... Uh, you can use it as a technique to calm, slow down your mind. If you just count down, like, out, out, outwardly, like, in your... Well, you don't have to do it out, out but... I think doing it out loud is quite good, um, <clears throat> depending on where you are, if obviously if you're in a public place. Uh, but it's like, if you count down from 10 down to 1, if you're not, if you kind of, if, you're, if your mind's going a little bit too fast, you'll be counting fast. In fact, you can do it as quickly as you want. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 10, 9. You can do that as many times as you want. But eventually you'll start to slow down because either you'll just get tired saying it you get bored saying it and it's it's like a distraction as well but then you end up like 10 9 and it's tedious so 10 9 8 7 6 five four three and you'd be like that it might, it might take a few minutes to get to that point there's ten nine eight but then when you're speaking when you're saying it slowly us slowly you know what i mean your mind has slowed down which means your breathing would have slowed down and you'd feel more relaxed you might have a bit of frustration because it's a bit boring to keep repeating 10 down to 1. But it's a different type of frustration. It's more like, okay, here we go again. 10, 9, 8. You know, that, that, that will to do it fast sort of leaves. Because there's no reward for it. I mean, if you did 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and you, if you did that 10 times, or you did it 100 times, and you won a new car, you know, you keep doing it, wouldn't you? Like, well, next time I get a house this time, 
I'd do it a hundred times, 10 on eight, so if you keep, keep that motivate, motivation up. But when there's no reward at the end of it, other than just, you get a chance to say it again, eventually you start to slow down. That's a nice little technique. Right, I've got questions to answer, blimey. Uh, do you ever fall asleep when you do count? Okay, that's it. So, Diana, I do. I have fallen asleep so many times doing hypnosis recordings. I've fallen asleep doing these recordings as well. If I do it at the wrong time when I'm tired, uh, I, a few times I've fallen asleep editing I'll, I'll be here, it's like early in the morning, I'm doing it like, uh, and I wake up and it's like an hour's gone, I'm like, what? <laughs> What's happened? So, yeah, that's why I don't do live sleep sessions lying down anymore. I used to do that. I used to do live relaxation sessions, live, literally lying in my bed, live stream. I'd fall asleep and there'd be like an hour and a half of <laughs> no, really, it's, it's just it's not good in fact I didn't even know how much bad I snore I left the microphone on one night by accident I thought I must have made a recording got into the bedroom maybe with I don't know when it was I think Andre or whatever and just lied down cuddling him and I fell asleep I woke up a few hours later and I came in and I'd recorded the whole thing and honestly I thought there was some kind of exorcism going on in there. It was sort of really sounded bad. Sky says sleeping is like time travel but you only jump forward. Well, I know this, oh dear, I had this really weird dream. Um... I want to tell you it, but it's probably, I don't know, it's, it, well, I'll tell you it, but I'll try and be careful with my words, because, you know, I try and keep everything quite uplifted and quite light, but I had a dream two nights ago, where I, my friend, who passed away six months ago, was still alive, he was, he was okay. And I dreamt it. So I woke, I dreamt that I dreamt that he had, all that stuff had happened and he was fine. And he was laughing at me. And we were on a bus and I couldn't figure out what, what? And then I started to think, what other, what other things has happened since then? Has it all been a dream? Have I literally dreamed you know, the whole of December, January, February, March, April, May, June, and nearly July. So it's nearly, near, well, I'm nearly eight months. I really dreamed that many, that much time. And I woke up. When I woke up, I was a little bit confused, to be honest. I was... It wasn't a nice dream, although it was, you know. It, the idea that I could not know what was going on to be that like um, sort of questioning myself in my dream about my dreams and it was just too weird to even for me and when I woke up I didn't know what was real just for a few seconds like is he okay have I dreamt all this just like how can you dream eight months that's a long, long sleep, isn't it? Anyway, um, well, I haven't seen it, so I guess it was a dream. Or well, it wasn't a dream, whichever way you look at it. It's very, very weird. Oh, really, really, really strange. I mean, I had one dream about him. We was in the garden. This is shortly after he passed away. I might have to edit this bit out if I remember, but it's, I'll just quickly say this. So we're in the garden, right? 
and the, the neighbour, because we used to spend quite a bit of time in the garden sometimes, just chatting and having a laugh and that. The neighbour, one of the neighbours looked out of the window and quite often he'd come out and talk to us as well. But he waved. And my friend said, oh, um, right, I'll be back in a minute. I've just got to let him know that I'm dead. And he wandered off around to his front door. I was like, okay. It's strange, really strange. And I know that he'd laugh, he'd laugh at that. Uh, it's not about himself, but he'd laugh if I told him that about someone else, like what a weird dream, it's, you know? So, I should move on from that, I think. So yeah, I do fall asleep, I do. I fall asleep, I'd, It's, the, the weird thing about it is none of, really, none of my hypnosis stuff is particularly, it's all slow, all the relaxation stuff is slow, it's all, I guess, boring in that way, and because I'm the one, and a part of it is like, it starts off kind of normal speed and then it gets slower and slower, Quite often I end up almost whispering at the end of it and I see when I when I talk about relaxing, I'm relaxing. When I'm when I talk about let's say if I do a body scan and I'm saying uh, focus on your left shoulder or your right knee, I'm focusing on my that part of the body that I've got at the same time. If I'm focusing on if I'm saying I'll focus on a colour uh, make it blue, then change it to yellow, then whatever, you know. Uh, let's say it's a, a part of your body where you want to reduce the the physical feeling in that part of the body. So you've you've taken that part out of your out of your body, put it in the air and like rotating it like a disc and you just change it colours, whatever, something like that. I'm imagining doing that myself. So when I'm doing a sleep recording it makes sense that I'm going to fall asleep sometimes. I guess it's. Uh, I don't mind because if it's not live, I can just edit it anyway, so it's fine. Uh, ben asked. Oh, thank you, Diana. Ben. Ben asked me. Ben asked me. Biggest music influence. Hmm. Well, I was a massive fan of Shaken Stevens when I was a kid, but I I loved everything eighties. To be honest, when I was because I grew up in well, I was born in nineteen seventy, but I only really became interested in music probably late seventies. And then early 80s, that was my first rule. You know, there were songs I liked in the late 70s, I remember. Rock the ball, the rock the ball, baby. And Grease, remember Grease? I got chills, they're multiplying. So I remember all that stuff. So I, I loved that album. I used to get albums for my birthday and for Christmas, like ABBA and the Bee Gees. And I used to quite... What was that little penchant for um, soundtracks, like classical music? So I had this, it wasn't my album, but it was a family album that was in a collection. So I used to play it in my bedroom when I was about, I don't know, nine, ten. And it was all of these big movies, music from movies like the Spaghetti Westerns and... Uh, Star Wars and Superman and uh, it was yeah I used, to lie, I used to lie down and just listen to him loved it loved that kind of music and I still do I still do love um, classical music very much I couldn't name anything even though I've listened to probably hundreds of hours if not more of classical music I don't I don't know, I don't know my, I don't know the, I'm not an ex, not an expert, I don't know them, if you know what I mean, I just, 
like Mozart, 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 or Beethoven, or Debussy, Debussy, um, Amadeus, Am 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 Amadeus, oh, oh, Amadeus, 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 um, Tchaikovsky, Tchaikovsky, is it Tchaikovsky? There's a few, but I don't know them. But I just I know them, but I don't, you know. I, I I'm more into the compilations, but music influences. It'd be hard for me not to say Michael Jackson, to be honest. Only only musically. Um, I, mean, I like Michael Jackson. I loved his. Yeah, I didn't really. I don't remember his young stuff because I'm talking about the music again. Like when he was like in the seventies. Even though it was my, I was growing up and he was only a little bit older than me. Barry's watching. Hi, Barry. Um, I think the first I really remember. I think I remember like songs like Ben and. Blame it on the boogie and things like that. But it was really only with Michael Jackson, it was Thriller. That was the first album that really garnered my attention because it, well, you couldn't get away from it. Thriller was everywhere. It was the biggest selling album of all time then, and it still is apparently. It just. It was huge. It, I think it was the same year as E.T. So E.T. was the biggest movie in history at the time. And Thriller was the biggest album in history at the time as well. And it went on to, and it still is apparently. It's still the most, the most sold album. So... According to the chart, I mean, I've got online to check this and it is still at the top. What I didn't know is they did a songbook, let's say they, the, for E.T. Michael Jackson did the songs for that. You also need to also do a, did a song for Free Willy, the movie. Willy... The two of us need to swim no more. I don't know what it was. It was like free. Free. Willy. Uh, I don't know. Something like that. So, uh, Megan. Hi, Megan. Megan's watching. Hello. So, as far as it influences, I... I've gone through periods. I've gone through periods. There was a period when I really loved 50s music. There was a period when I really loved 60s music. Uh, I've never really, I've never, I've never not loved the Beatles. I don't remember a time when I didn't like Beatles songs or Elvis Presley songs. But part of the reason I got into Elvis was because of my brother being a huge fan like huge um, and I remember 1977 when he left us and I I didn't really know who, I kind of knew who he was but you know I was seven years old in fact it was before I was seven I was just I was seven in the August and I think he, he that was in just July June or July 77 I remember that day because my brother was upset because his idol had passed away. And I was upset because there was no cartoons on telly. Because it was just news. Um, very selfish, I guess, wasn't it, really? Like not, not, to have not to have cartoons, I'm talking about. Very selfish of them. But I didn't realise, because... To be honest, that... There's only been one other time that it's been like that. 
Wow, Sky says, I was born the day after Elvis died. And my mum said all the nurses were crying. And she was too. Yeah. It's, um... So I remember that day because it was... It, we went out. It was a summer. We went out and it was apps. It pelted down with rain. Like proper, proper rain. Uh, Barry says, I'll have to pop off getting my tea. Okay, Barry, thanks for, thanks for visiting. Um, I This will be available as a podcast tomorrow morning when I edit it all and, you know, like normal. But I just thought I'd do a live thing because I haven't done one for a while. And I know how popular my funny face is, so... Yeah. So, yeah. Also, let's just remind you that I'm a human being. I'm not just this magnetic voice <laughs> no never never so uh, 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 so I don't know as far as Elvis Elvis I loved Elvis I loved the Beatles Michael Jackson Stevie Wonder I love Stevie Wonder but then I'm not sure if I even remember the first song I think probably Ebony and Ivory was one of my first songs I heard him. And then the I Just Called to Say I Love You. I just called to say I love you. And so, yeah. We all know that people love to live with you. Wasn't a good impression. Uh, any plans to still move? Uh, this is another question from Ben. No, nothing now. I'm stuck here at the moment. Uh, there's no way of moving anywhere. It's, yeah, it's, everything's, I mean, things have quietened down quite a bit over the last eight months. It used to be very hectic here at times and very, quite horrible actually at times. But now, I get on with everyone. I always got on with everyone, but it's it was the the visitors that came into the building. But now don't really get anything like that, so that's nice. Now Vinny's just got onto the settee, and I'm wondering if he goes to sleep, I can grab him. But is that rude, isn't it? What are you doing, Vinny? What are you doing? What are you doing? I know there's, there's no point, as soon as I get up, he's going to jump off. So there's no point me doing it. But he's trying to do something. I'm looking in my eye and I'm trying to look. He's up to something. He's very naughty. I've got no one watching now. No one's watching. Okay, never mind. Never mind. So, I'm not planning to move, no. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll stay here for a while. We'll see what's happening. I'm, I'm really in the process of trying to get my debts paid as far as like real life, like what's going on in my life at the moment with that stuff. That's the most important thing for me. I got to get that done. Cause every time one debt is paid, I feel huh, a little bit lighter, like a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more kind of yeah, it's what I need to do, so I'll just keep doing that until it's done. It's going to take me a while, but I'll get it. I'll get it done eventually. Um, Favourite film of all time? I've got a few, but the, no, there's, there is one. Let, but then I was thinking, mm, there's a few. So there's, it's a wonderful life. That is pretty much if I had if I had to choose one movie that would be it my favorite movie ever but then there's others that I really like that I love in fact one would be The Wanderers the other one would be Groundhog Day um, another one would be Grease. 
another one would, I was thinking about this yesterday, blimey. What was, what was the, uh, oh, um, uh, oh, what's it called? Patrick Swayze movie. Pat, does Patrick Swayze movie, um, he's laid down right on his, flat on his, if I wait long enough, I'll put, he might fall asleep. But that's wrong though, isn't it? Pick him up when he's asleep, because it will, Probably not very fair to do that to him. I might though. Club, club, not Clubhouse, Fight Club or whatever it's called. He, um, Patrick Swayze when he's in charge of that Clubhouse thing. It's gone out of my head now. I know House Club. House Club? Clubhouse, Fight Club, Fight House, oh, Fight Club's a different movie. Uh, other movies, I guess I got to think of what, what's the kind of movie that I could watch forever, or what the, or do I look at it as like a movie that I could watch. Like regularly and nothing there's no movie that I'd want to watch regularly I'm not really uh, like watching a movie over and over again but if there was a movie I would want to keep for the future all of those but at the top of the list would be It's a Wonderful Life because I suppose in my own little way I've tried to it, it's influenced me yeah, I guess it has. It's influenced me since I was 17 when I first saw it. Uh, I know it's played every year over and over again in some countries. It doesn't really get played over and over in this country. It, I think they might play it once or whatever, but it's not. It's um, there are there are films that do get played over and over. So when I was a kid, it always used to be The Wizard of Oz and um, Spartacus and stuff like that. Uh, I suppose also like the comedies Life of Brian and Airplane because I watched both of those movies back to back for the first time when I was about 14 and it's the most I've ever laughed in my life. Seriously. I think, well, up to that, I don't think I've ever laughed so much. It was just non-stop. And I, I'd never seen a Monty Python movie before. Never seen Airplane. Didn't know what Airplane was. Just, just hadn't seen it before. And I don't know how I managed not to have seen it. Oh, it's so funny. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they... I don't know, maybe I just didn't know it was any good. But for me, it's one of the funniest movies ever made. And Life of Brian, I, I think if you if you don't mind the, if you, if, I, I just think it's funny. It was just, it's made me laugh because it is making fun. It's not making fun, but it's like a, it's a, a spoof of you know a biblical story and they do it so well and it's so you know it's uh, yeah I guess yeah I just found it hilarious anyway um, I know that it was controversial at the time what else mm -hmm. hmm, I don't know that's about it, but it's a wonderful life. That's the number one. And but then the thing is, you know, I I've got a more I love comedy. So, you know, if it was kind of like a desert island situation, you've got to take one movie. 
I'd, I'd be stuck. I'd be stuck to take one anything because I like I like to have lots of different things. Right, what's the next question? Thanks for that, Ben. Hillary asks, what is your favourite novel book you have read? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Um, that is a good question. Um, blimey. Favourite book? Well, I do have my favourite book. <laughs> if you want to, if you kind of... I'm going to try and pick him up. I do have my favourite book. A second, come on. Oh, don't grab. Hey, it's alright, look. Hello, do you want to say hello to everyone? I picked him up so you can see him. So I don't know what time it is in the video or whatever, but if you want to see the little boy, little little Finny. Hey, he doesn't want to be on now, let him go. Alright, go on then. See you then. Ow! My favourite book is here. Where is it? Um. Oh, yeah, there it is. Right, it's on the screen. So, what are you doing? You didn't want to be on the video. Now you're hassling me. Is this book? This is not. Only, this is my favourite book. And I have read it multiple times over the years, but it's also my oldest book. And I bought this, it was £25 when I bought it. If you see that, £25. And I bought this in probably 1993, 94. It's a little bit worn at the edges, as you can see, it's a little bit, a little bit worn, but had a long time and it's both in Chinese and English or it might be Mandarin in English I don't know and it's the teachings of Buddha I should tell you what it is for those not watching the video the teachings of Buddha but my favorite book I tell you what my favorite like novel I don't really read novels so much these days i used to when i was a kid I used to love them um i've been much more into factual our oh, sky says Vinny, Vinny, yep he's gone now he's he's sitting on my foot he's still part even though he's underneath the desk he is part of the podcast very important part i think trying to think of some of the books I go through periods like I go through different moods obviously but I'm talking about for books so there's a time when I used to love reading science fiction books when I was a kid there was times I liked to read Buddhist books there was times I really got into reading Yeah, I went through a period when I went through Beat Generation. So I was very into like Kerouac, Ginsberg, you name it. I had, all, I had pretty much all of those books. All the books from like the 60s, 50s, 60s. And I loved them. There was a bookshop in the West End that sold them all. Like it's just like you can get, get anything. And, it's, and then, then I discovered... Charles Bukowski and I do have wait a second where is it where is it where is it where is it where's Charlie where's Charles Bukowski Charles Bukowski where are you he's here somewhere 
John Bukowski. Right, he's hiding. That's weird. Why would he be hiding from me? Don't tell me that I got rid of them, please. I'm sorry. Blimey, Vinny. You're going to stand underneath my feet. You're going to get trod on. I'm not trying to trod on. I can't find them anywhere. That's weird. I wonder what happened to them. Maybe they're not up there. I don't know. Maybe, I'd, maybe they're in the cupboard somewhere. So uh, Charles Bukowski, he very famous for writing The Office, Factotum, um, Tales of a Dirty Old Man, things like that. That's going to bug me now. Where are those books? That is going to bug me. Why? How could they just disappear? It's not impossible. That's really going to annoy me. Where are they? They're not here. But I don't understand why they're not here because they were. I love them. Unless they're down here. Oh, there they are. Found them. Oh. I don't know. Oh no, that's Roald Ro Dahl. So we've got one, two, three, five, five Charles Bukowski books. So the first one is this one, which is Post Office. I'll stick that on the screen. The second one is there. What's that one? Factotum. Third one is Women. Fourth one is Tales of Ordinary Madness. And the fifth one, Notes of a Dirty Old Man. I also used to have is quite a few of his books of poetry as well so I don't know let's see how much blimey this gives you an idea 899 899 899 899 899 so I don't know how long ago it was that books were 899 a little while ago I think but here's another book. Here's one of my favourite books of all time. I've actually got it here. Wait a sec. There you go. Wilt by Tom Sharp. Very funny book. I read this. I mean, this is a it's a different copy to the one I had when I was a kid. But it was probably the funniest book I ever read. As a kid, the thing that made me laugh the most. And it's rude, which I liked, but it was funny. You know, it's very, very funny. I read a few of his books, a few of the Wilt books. I think I've got three or four down there somewhere. Um, other books that I found, I know you're asking me my favourite books, but the Woody Allen books as well. The book, books that he used to write in the probably 70s. Brilliant. Like White Feathers. And he, I had his um, all of his books in one big like, book once. But I had him individually as well at some time. So funny. Really, really funny. Uh, so yeah. I, I mean, I'm saying I haven't read all of his books, but. The radio days is really funny as well. I'm trying to think what my favourite novel ever. Favourite novel. I tell you, well, this, this is the opposite now because I'm going to, I'm leading like that because Vinny's on my foot so I can't, 
can't move the chair around now back to where it was because I don't want the chair to hit him so I probably I'm really going back now I don't have a favourite book I've got a favourite book as in the teachings of Buddha but it's not a novel is it so my favourite novel possibly the Tom Sharp Wilt because it's made me laugh this, this is like decades ago that I read that uh, I really read a little bit about of it, but it's not the same now, you know, it's, it, I don't have the same, I, I've not got the same brain or the same um, naivety that I had when I was 13 or 12, you know, but naivety. Um, I'm probably just as childish in some ways. I can't think what what is my favourite book. I can't I can't even think. My favourite novel. I've read a lot of books over the years. But nowadays more factual. I guess the man's man's meaning man's search for meaning is probably I mean that's kind of a novel. But it's almost it's also a story, a true story as well. So that that's a really powerful book. So I guess that's probably up there as well. Um, so there are some funny books that I've got. Psychotherapy books that are funny. Um, let me move around. Hopefully he'll let me move. Let me move any. Give me two seconds. Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Here we go. I've got a few psychotherapy books. I had a lot more. But, um, so, this, this is by, if you've never read any of this man, Irvin Yalom. So, Irvin Yalom. He's, I've got a couple of his books. I used to have more in the past. But it's, this is a Tales of Psychotherapy. And some really funny bits in that. It might not supposed to be funny, but it's... Um, regardless, it's still funny. So, I... Yeah, it's funny. But there's something he says, and I think it's in the other book, the living. No, I don't know if I've got. Um, I think I've got some audio books of his as well. Um, on uh, Audible, and he's very much into philosophy and putting that philosophy into his psychotherapy. I, mean, I think he's retired now, anyway. I don't even know if he's. He's probably in his nineties, but he said. If the, it touched me this one, is if you, if you were told that from this moment onwards, um, you, you know, you, when, when you, when we pass away, we would get reborn and we would have to relive our lives over and over again, but only from this moment onward. So we wouldn't have to go through any of the other stuff we've been through. With our, our lives would start right now. How would you spend the rest of your life? What would you do with your time? The next 30, 40, 50 years, whatever it is. How would you spend that time? If you knew that, you know, you'd be reborn and your life would start from this very moment. How, knowing that you'd have to repeat it constantly, how would you spend your time? 
What would you do? How would you treat people? How would you treat yourself? And that's very powerful, I thought. A very, very powerful idea. I remember reading that and I think, and I was listening to it on the audible book, and I think to myself, I need a poo. So I went to the toilet and uh, when I got back, I forgot what I was doing. So I just went to sleep. So yeah, that's that's uh, a few books. I've got to be careful, otherwise I start getting all the books out. What other books do I love? There's a few. Uh, I mean, I'm starting to think, because I've, I've held back from buying books over the years. I mean, I could have gone. I think it's because uh, I destroyed my book collection about nine years ago, ten years ago. And I didn't want to do that again. So I was very, very careful about getting any new books. Because that was... 20 years worth of books gone it was a, it was a blip it was a brain brain fart or whatever you want to call it lasted two days I think some people call it many are or mixed state anyway um, so what is your favorite so that, that's it a favorite novel so I covered that kind of thanks uh, Hillary Kate asks two questions what was good about your week and what was bad about your week? Hmm. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Um. I'm trying to think of something. What was good? Just give me, give me, give me a couple of seconds. I'll think of something. What was good about the week? What was bad about the week? I think earlier in the week, I mean, it's only Friday. So yeah, early in the week, I had a lot of back pain, upper back pain, and it was getting a little bit too much. And that was kind of quite a low point to be honest because I was like oh this is just getting a little bit overwhelming for me and the it's nice to I've stopped the exercising and everything and now it's probably since Monday and now I can feel it starting to relax and feels more comfortable than it did and that's nice so that that's a good point so it's probably all to do with my back to be honest but if I was going to look at other things um, a good part was I paid managed to pay off some probably the best there's three good things that happened this week one was I managed to pay off uh, towards my debt one of my debts another two things was two things probably helping my friend out last night that was quite good I felt quite nice and also I helped to uh, a dog got out of someone's house and was running away so I managed to catch the dog and grab the dog by the collar until the person got there and then he came out and didn't have the lead so I put my lead Vinny's lead on the dog for the person because she was looking after the dog so it didn't live around there it was looking after it for her son so it could have been a problem like running off like it did or he, he or she did and so I carried Vinny and that felt like quite a good thing to have done. 
bad, like, just felt quite nice. Yeah, that's probably it, really. Yeah. I'm sure stuff's happened this week, but I can't really remember. Yeah. So, Megan. Thanks for that, Kate. Megan says, this was probably already been asked before, but my f but favourite movie t and TV series... Also, favorite act actor actress when you were growing up. Loads of love to you, and little Finny. Thank you, Megan. Fa okay, I'll do the. F I've already kind of covered favorite movie. I think already in this. Have I? Right, I've already covered that in this podcast. I won't cover the movie again, um, but I'll go for the TV series. But first, favorite actor actress growing up. Favourite actor and actress? Probably my favourite actor. Hmm. Probably Robin Williams, I'd say. Because I used to see Mork and Mindy when I was out on TV the first time round. I loved that. Also, The Fonz. Loved The Fonz. Mr. T. Who didn't love Mr. T? Mr. T was the greatest, so yeah, I loved Mr. T, loved the Fonz, I loved the Six Million Dollar Man as well, the Bionic Man, but you know what, probably the one that I would eclipse all, all, probably would be Kung Fu, Kane, or David Carradine. Loved, loved David Carradine. I just loved Kung Fu, that, that TV show, Kung Fu. So, favourite actor? Yeah, for t like for TV shows, movies. So, favourite male actor? So, female actor or actress? Uh, in a sitcom or in TV. Really got to think hard for this growing up. Um, by the way, if you wonder why I'm sitting like that, it's because I don't want to tread on Vinny. Uh, what could I, what could... Favourite female actor, actress, actress, actress. Growing up, I liked Dolly Parton. I know she's predominantly a singer, but she was in... She had a couple of hits. <laughs> uh, she was in a couple of movies, um, the more than a couple, but... Uh, Nine to five, I really liked, and the I tell you, probably one of my favorite actors thinking about it would be oh, what's his name? Oh, I like Clint Eastwood, but not for the reason you might think. I, I didn't really watch the Dirty Harry movies. because uh, I was too young. I did watch them, but I didn't really get to see them so much when I was little. But I, any which way but loose, I don't mean any which way you can, because he was a, like a fire in that. So I like those movies. And it had um, Clyde the orangutan. Remember he said, right, Clyde, right. And he put his hand out and he'd punch a police car or something. Um... Clyde, yeah, Clyde, blimey, it's going back, in it? And, yeah, so I'd, I mean, actually thinking about it, my favourite actor for a while 
was Bruce Lee. For a long while, Bruce Lee. And then I was a big fan of Jackie Chan as well, especially his early movies, before he was famous over here. He was, I mean, he was a child star in, a, in a, um, I'm not sure where he was from, I think it was China. But he'd, uh, as was Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was a film, a child star as well. But he, uh, Jackie Chan did all his movies in the 70s, like late 70s, where he was, they are actually masterpieces. They're, they're, anyone in the, anyone in, anyone knows, knows, if you know what I mean. It's, you don't see them on telly, but things like Drunken Master, uh, Snake Fist or whatever. It's so funny, and he kind of is doing what he did in the movies that when he came to Hollywood. But imagine him doing that as a young man. Not that he's old, but he was like in his early twenties, in his complete prime, and it was, it was funnier than anything he did in Hollywood. It was so good. It, I don't know, just my my opinion. And they were dubbed over, which was terrible dubbing, but Jackie Chan was one of my favourite actors. Clint Eastwood, he was so cool. Superman, probably, to be honest. There wasn't really anyone I thought, oh, I, I love, I've got to watch that movie because that person is in it. I didn't really have that back then. Because when I grew up, we had megastar actors. I'm not saying that there isn't any now, but there was like Robert Redford and um, oh, just like these huge Kirk Douglas and um, Frank Sinatra. I don't know. You know, uh, just what's his name from The Godfather? And there was so so many big, big, big stars of the screen. Because movies was a lot more popular back then, like going to the cinema in the 70s and the 80s and probably the 90s, and it's kind of petered off, petered off over the years. But there was times when you get these, uh, it used to be disaster movies where they get all these stars all together in one movie. And I accidentally watched a movie the other day which had a similar thing to that. And it was uh, Mars Attack. And I couldn't believe I was watching it. And there's so many stars. And I think it was like about 2001, 2002 or something, maybe the, the movie. Full of, sort of Jack Nicholson is like the main star, but it's got so many famous people in it. It's ridiculous. Like, Huge amounts. Uh, Michael J. Fox, uh, so many. So, um, the, what was I going to say? Okay, so yeah, it's, it's hard to give you a particular actor. I'm not very good at these questions, am I? Megan, you're the only one listening now, or watching, or Sky. No one else is on here. I've got one person listening or watching. Um, favorite TV show. So I'm going to go favorite favorite TV show. It's a female actress. Uh, not don't really. One yeah, Wonder Woman. Probably. And the what's the name from Charlie's Angels? Not Cheryl Ladd. Um, can't remember her name. She was in Charlie's Angels right from the start and to the end. She was never. I mean, for me, she was a star, but she was never one of the ones that went on to be like like Farrah Fawcett. Who went on to be a mega star. She wasn't at that. She didn't go on to that, but she was. I also loved. Um, loved I also liked for her actressy actressing um, 
Pamela Ewing from Dallas as well. So that's that, but that was when I was a kid. So it's changed as I got older. Um, yeah, so that was probably my favourite female actresses. I did have a little thing for Hayley Mills. I fell in love with Hayley Mills when I was a kid, and she was a kid. I didn't realise that she was like an adult because the the movies I was watching was from the sixties. I was watching them in the eighties. So I'm watching these movies thinking, oh, Hayley Mills, she's beautiful. And Cause she was like maybe the same age as I was when she was making it that I was when I was watching it. Not realizing she was in her fifties now. So, but I just, oh, so I just really liked Hayley Mills. So, do you want to know my favourite actress in real life? I went to see... Who was it? I think it's uh, Bean, The Beanstalk. It was uh, when I was in there. Vinny's just farted. So, <laughs> blimey. Whenever he relaxes, he's literally leaning like this. His, his back's right curled. It's like he's really getting all the air. As much air out as possible. Bless him. As long as he's leaning against me and his body, part of his body is on my foot, he's happy. So, so cute. I'm not going to pick him up again because he's, he's happy. Linda Carter, Wonder Woman. Yep, that's right, Sky. Old uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, so I went to this, this uh, pantomime when I was about five, maybe six. And I fell in love with the actress. It was actually played by, it was, it was, she, what's it? Jack, she played Jack. And that's the thing with pantomimes. I don't know if you have pantomimes in other countries, but it's quite often it's the, the men play the women and the women play the men. That's kind of a traditional thing in pantomimes. And she played Jack. And I loved her. I loved her. I really did. I was like, oh, I just fell in love. It was weird. I was very, I was quite adult for my age in some ways. I used to fall in love with women when I was like five, six. I don't know why. So, um, favorite TV shows. I'm going to be going over old ground because I kind of mentioned the shows during this talking about the actors. My favourite shows growing up. Hmm. See, so starting off, Mork and Mindy. But I used to like Rent a Ghost when I was a kid. I didn't, I didn't get to watch. I, I used to watch TV when I was a little kid. Little, 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 little. Like, but I think it was like Play School. Andy Pandy, things like that. But uh, then I went through a period where I didn't watch any telly hardly because I was in the children's home and they, we weren't allowed to watch telly other than like crossroads before going to bed. Then at the weekend, maybe we could watch TV, but during the week, not much. And so I don't really, I didn't really have much of a routine of watching TV shows. And then when I got older, when I was like seven, yeah, I started watching like early morning Saturday cartoons. Loved that. Loved everything, anything. Hong Kong Fury, um, anything from Disney, yeah, Bugs Bunny, Scooby Doo, whatever, you name it, I'd watch it. As I got older, yeah, a little bit older, like eight. I used to watch, well, before I was eight, probably, I used to watch Mork and Mindy. And then that period, I can't remember what year was, was which. So as we're moving into like the early 80s, so the A-Team, Wonder Woman, Bionic Man, Bionic Woman, different strokes. Um, um, 
trying to think. We used to have TV shows that I used to watch on a Saturday evening. To, to be honest, I could take or leave it. I wasn't that bothered. The, the, the programmes I really liked were things like Grange Hill. I used to watch them after school. I think that was on once a week. Uh, I used to like watching Fraggle Rock. No, um, yeah, but I used to like watching Sesame Street with my little brother. Because it was education, wasn't it? Then I used to like watching Fraggle Rock as well. But I was, again, it was more with my little brother. But I liked, I thought it, I thought it was funny. Because when he came along, when he was old enough, I could watch cartoons with him. Even though I was really too old to be watching cartoons, it was an excuse. So things like the Musker Hounds and uh, Muppet Babies, things like that. I was too old for that. But I could watch it because, and I love watching it. So it's quite nice. I used to I used to watch Saturday morning TV when I was in my twenties. Seriously, I'd be working all week, and on a Saturday morning, if I wasn't, sometimes I'd work a Saturday morning. But if I wasn't, I'd watch like Ant and Dick doing the I don't know whatever show they did with Cat Dealey. Uh, watch cartoons, the Muppet Babies again, that'd still be on. Fraggle Rock, things like that, like repeats. So yeah, I did, I loved all that stuff. I don't know, what went wrong? What went wrong? Uh, yeah, so, to be honest, when I was young, I'd watch anything, anything and everything. Yeah, I would. I just watch TV just for the sake of it. As I, as I got older, I became a bit, more, a bit more fussier. But there was a time when I just watched whatever. I had my favourite shows. Mork and Mindy. I, I remember I came home from watching Superman 2 at the, at the cinema. My older brother took me. We got back and I was annoyed because I'd missed Mork and Mindy. And I was having a tantrum. I was thinking I was like eight or something, and he said, but I took you to see Superman 2. You wanted to go and see Superman 2, and I took you. I said, no, but I wanted to get back in time to watch Mork and Mindy. Never got to see that episode. And there was a time, I was, what, 19. I moved to London for a while, and I came back. So I moved, and then I went back again in 91, forever until I moved back again and my dad for some reason he used to phone me on a Friday evening at 6.30 right on the dot when Mork and Mindy was on telly because they were playing reruns I think it was Channel 4 or BBC 2 Channel 4 or something like that and it was the first time Mork and Mindy had been on TV for a, a long time like over a decade, had never they never showed it, never showed repeats, and this for some reason they were showing it again. So I'd get home from work, all excited to watch Mork and Mindy. Maybe, yeah, that's probably a weird thing to say, but and then someone used to call me, Jason, there's someone on the phone for you, because it was a shared phone, it was in a communal phone for the house. It was, like, it was nice that he was phoning me, but I'm missing Mork and Mindy. And it's probably a weird thing because I was 20, I was 19, 19 years old. I was probably a bit old to be worrying about that, but oh well. So, what else? Uh, any other favourite movie, any favourite TV shows? There's a few that I really liked. Uh, one was Mr. Merlin, Mr. Merlin, and that was one of my favourite TV shows when I was a kid. Cheers, that was, as I moved from being a kid, well, from, like, when I moved into like later teens, that's when I started watching the comedies. When I, when I first got my, my own TV, it was a black and white TV when I was about 14. 
it was around the time when I don't know I was watching started watching boxing on my own I could watch I was watching mash at night so I could start late at night watching TV for the first time ever loved it and uh, I got to see cheers and I don't know if they were showing them like repeats of it like during the week I was like this is brilliant I loved cheers everything about it the music just the sound of it the sound just everything and I was watching it in black and white but I just loved cheers and after that moving into my later teens Friday night became like a, a time to watch the sitcoms so you had Cheers, uh, Roseanne, Golden Girls um, trying to think what other ones a lot more came later but that was the one I mean then like in the 90s you had um, Frasier and Ellen the boy Ellen I used to love that or the Ellen show if it was Ellen I think it was just called Ellen and other, other programs um, Ali McBill I know that's the 90s as well but I love that show so good but that's like later. That's in my. That's a different question for another time. <laughs> so thank you, um, Megan. Joanne, uh, hi Joanne. Favorite meal your nan ever made you? Favorite meal. Anything my nan made was perfect. As. In a way, the favorite thing she ever did was just give me cakes. I love their cakes, especially rock cakes. Cup of tea and a rock cake. Quite often, I mean, she'd, she'd cook for me, but quite often I'd just have a sandwich or something like that. Um, if she'd have a roast dinner. She, she was, whatever she cooked was good. She just, I've been thinking about this question earlier when I saw it, first of all. Um, I'm gonna go around there and have a roast dinner on a Sunday and stuff. And she'd cook. If she'd cook it, yeah, she'd cook something for me if I wanted it as eggs and chips and whatever. But generally, I was okay with a sandwich, to be honest. A cheese sandwich, nice cup of tea, maybe some crisps, and then cakes, rock cakes, or any whatever she had was nice. Yeah. I mean, the thing is with my nan, like this is growing up, because in 1991, I moved to London. So I didn't really, I used to see my nan on a visit and everything, but I wouldn't be really spending much, I wouldn't be eating there very often, uh, like dinners and stuff. So I'd, it'd be, I'd be coming down for the day quite often that's pretty what I'd be doing you know I'd come down for a Sunday and go back and then when I did move back from London in 2001 she was already elderly at that point she broke her hip the first time so she couldn't really sort of stand up to be doing cooking anymore uh, so yeah those days were kind of gone I mean, she still like used to do some cakes, rock cakes, and I think I used to help her out a little bit sometimes. We'd do some book baking together a couple of times, but it, you know, after 2001, so between, and then, you know, 2014 was when, um, yeah, I'd just, for a long time she couldn't really do stuff like that anymore but I used to I used to just like being with her I didn't care really about that stuff I mean I'd get uh, what I used to do sort of in the last few years is I'd phone her up do you need anything from the shop from the supermarket I'd, I'd say to her 
not asking you. And she'd say, yeah, I, so I'll get her some bread. And if she needed something, and then I'd go to the bakery, which was pretty much next door, and I'd buy us some cakes to eat. So, um, and she'd probably make a cup of tea or something like that. So th thinking about that, that was when she, because even when she moved into residential care, or a residential, it wasn't a home, but it was, um, she had her own flat, but it was, what's the right word? still care there's still people there to look after her if she needed it um sheltered accommodation i think the right name is yeah and that was just up the road from where she used to live anyway so it'd still be the same supermarket and the same bakery so go in there and get that and that would be it so if she needed something from the, from the supermarket i'd get it for her and uh Get, get, get a few cakes for us to eat as well. So I wouldn't really go around there to eat anymore. But when I was a kid, I mean, she cooked everything. I mean, just, she was a whiz. She could, there's nothing she couldn't cook when I was like little. But it was more a case of, we used to go around to and eat, but I think it was more, we'd invite them around to us. They'd come over to us to eat with us, you know? We'd still go around there and eat and we'd be there and it'd be, I think if we kind of met up in a, as a, as a family or in a, like, you know, cause it was a small house, it'd be more like a buffet, you know, like crisps and sausages and little sandwiches and things like that, rather than like a, a big meal. We did have meals with like Christmas and New Year's and stuff like that. But it's her rock cakes, that's what I really remember when it comes to cooked things. The name of that, you'll see cakes are cooked. So rock cakes, that's what I remember really. Yeah, uh, so thank you for that, Joanne. Next one, Sean asks, do you have a job? How do you fit around your podcasts? Um, no, I don't have a job and I, I used to, when I worked, when I, when I used to work, I, so the first 10 years of doing, not these podcasts, but doing like podcasts and videos, I was working and then I was at university, then I was working again. I always done videos and podcasts for that first decade since 2006 you know, in the evenings or at weekends and stuff. Sometimes even before going to work, I'd make a video. But now, I mean, I don't do them every day. So sometimes I do them regularly, sometimes not. Depends on how I am. But yeah. And let's see, that's all. I think that's all of the, all of the questions. Any more questions? I'm wondering if anyone's actually added any questions. So I've not searched this. I'll turn the volume down just in case it comes on. Um, seen by 18, 51 views, 28 comments. Just see if there's any other seven comments there. Right, okay. I do believe. Oh, no. I do believe that's it. That's a lot. And I do believe I've done it in less than two hours. Not that I'm not trying to do it quickly, but maybe it's doing it as a video. It's a little bit distracting, to be honest. It's, I'm just, it's really hard to focus on something when you've got this beautiful face looking back at you. Um, yeah. So that's it. That's all the Q's and A's for this Friday. I hope that I've answered your questions. Um, I will 
do another one next Friday. I hopefully will make a recording again tomorrow, you know, a podcast episode. I will, this will be a li live to watch, you know, to rewatch if you want to, or any, whenever you want. I'll just leave it on here. This is on the Jason Newlands Boring Group Facebook group. And I will probably try and download this if I can and put it onto YouTube. I will edit the podcast tomorrow morning, early. So it'll be available online from like, I don't know, eight, eight or nine in the morning, maybe earlier than that. So yeah, that's it. Now I'm gonna, it's now, Brian, 10 to eight in the evening. I'm going to get myself some food, food to eat and just relax for the next couple of hours and then go to bed. So thank you everyone who's watched, thank you everyone that's commented and especially thank you for those that have uh, left me questions for today's Q&A. Thank you, remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Remember to be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Right, I'm going to go. See ya.